It's the show. Here we see the elusive Australian streaming car with its distinctive cry and it just won't shut up. Are you making a video game? I mean, chances are if you know me then you probably are making a video game or at least doing something creative. And so, if you are making a video game, I thought I'd do a segment occasionally on how to make your game more accessible to people who experience a disability. Because I know you want your game to be accessible. Today we're looking at one of the basics of motor accessibility. That is, accessibility for people who might have trouble controlling one or more bits of their body. Who might be missing one or more bits of their body, or who might have any other kind of unspecified movement issue. This is actually a lot more common than people think, but it's so often overlooked, which means that gamers with ALS or Parkinson's or gamers who have had a hand amputated won't be able to fully enjoy whatever wonderful digital delights you're creating. But Corbin, you wonder in a wondrous way, what can I do to ensure these people can play my game? And I'm so glad you asked because there are so, so many things and although I'm not going to tell you all of them today, I will tell you one or two. I need to make this a series after all. First off, one of the most basic accommodations you can make for people with a motor disability is just providing the ability to remap controls. Sure, you might think that the best way to experience your game is using WASD and left shift, but that's not going to work for everyone. Heck, if you don't happen to have a left hand, then you're already out of luck when it comes to WASD interfaces. The inability to remap buttons in a game is something that is really looked down on by the accessibility community. In fact, there has been a petition online to make remappability an industry standard and it gained over 80,000 signatures. This is something I will always pull a dev up for in my accessibility breakdowns. But there are other things that you can do to help those with motor disabilities access your creation. And today's second item is something that has been brought up recently in regards to the likes of Blizzard and other popular publishers. The ability to use non-standard input devices to control the game. Recently, and by recently, I actually mean about a month and a half ago now, Overwatch game director Jeff Kaplan called for Xbox and PlayStation to cease recognition of input conversion devices, which would essentially mean that players would be forced to use the console standard controller when playing the game on these devices. Although Kaplan's intentions were to level the playing field so that people couldn't take advantage of the extra precision that a mouse and keyboard affords them, the effect that this would end up having would be removing the ability for countless gamers who cannot use a standard Xbox or PlayStation controller and instead need to use, if not a mouse and keyboard, any of the other assistive tech devices that allow gamers with disabilities to play on consoles. Ultimately, you need to decide where your priorities lie. Decide if you punish a group of people who wouldn't be able to play your game without assistance. Is there a middle ground, perhaps? Regardless, if your game is single player, co-op multiplayer, or any type of non-competitive experience, you really need to think about how you'll handle your use of these devices. And that's it on accessibility for now, though. Enjoy the rest of the show! Take the plunge, I'll have you on my hand. I remember the presidential mole man scandal. I remember it like it was yesterday. 
It's fairly easy to remember because it was captured on VHS. I remember the misguided speech that the president was giving at the time. I remember the hush that came over the stadium as the Mole Man King emerged from the bowels of the earth. I remember the squelch of the custard cream pie as it oozed into the strangely orange crevices of the president's face. I remember the bomb that the president sent down, deep, to take care of the Mole Man once and for all. I remember all of this, but for some reason I don't remember the blue-haired commando whose mission it was to escort the bomb. But now I can relive her mission thanks to the latest game by Australian developer Mogomoto, Mole Man Must Die. Mole Man Must Die is a single-player, infinitely vertically scrolling action game. It's fast-paced, high-intensity, and old-school in style, with great shoot-em-up action and an aesthetic that harkens back to 1980s B-movie classics, including a VHS-style overlay that faithfully emulates the look and feel of an old, chunky TV. They made my flat screen feel like a CRT, and I love it. And given that the only controls you've got are move, jump, shoot, and explode, it's pretty simple to get the hang of. When it comes to accessibility, it's clear that the devs have really put their hearts into making sure gamers with disabilities can play. It's really great to see that even though the devs clearly love the VHS-style graphical effect, they've taken into consideration the fact that it may cause issues such as epilepsy or motion sickness for some players, and the effect can be disabled at any time in the options menu. In the same vein, there is also a slider to allow players to adjust the intensity of the screen shake effect or turn it off entirely, and I have to say that it's great to see a slider for this rather than just an on-off toggle. More Men also appeals to my ADHD with its sense of replayability. Each time you die, you're awarded a random gameplay modifier. These change the game up in a number of ways, and not always ones that are useful to the player. For instance, you might have explosive weapons, which is great because you can take out more mole men with less ammo, but also the mole men might spawn twice as fast. You can have up to three of these at a time, with old modifiers dropping off your list in a first in, first out style system. Another excellent feature of the game over screen is the encouragement to beat not only your old high scores, but those of other players. Instead of simply showing you a high score chart, which is still visible at the start of each round of gameplay, the game over screen instead tells you how close you were to beating someone else's high score, which feels really lovely, and it's a tactic I'd like to see employed more often. The game isn't perfect though, with a couple of issues that I hope can be fixed by the devs in future patches, and most of these have to do with gameplay and a lack of transparency, which is essential for players with cognitive disabilities. A minor issue in this space is that, although the player gets XP bubbles for killing enemies, there's no overt explanation for what collecting enough XP to level up actually does. Eventually, I figured out that it unlocks new weapons, but because there is so much going on on screen in game, I missed this during my first few hours of play. Another issue is that it's really difficult to keep track of how easy you are to kill, especially because there's no indication on the HUD that you've collected an armor power-up. Dying, especially to enemies, can be kind of frustrating, and not in the usual, oh no, I cut so far kind of way, but more in the, what? How did that thing kill me? I didn't see any indication that it was going to attack kind of way. Again, this is really just a function of how much is going on on screen at any time, combined with the number of particle effects that can be bouncing around. I think that a way to improve on some of these issues could be to include one of those old school detailed FAQ sections like what used to appear in Monster Bash and other Apogee games. But I always like to end on a positive, and so to tie this episode of the show together nicely, it really makes me pleased to say that not only does Mole Men offer full controller support on Steam, but you can fully customise the controls no matter what input style you're using. Right down to the pause button. It is really great to see. If you like games with a kind of arcade, you're never going to beat this, but at least you can get a high score so everyone can see your name type feel, then I really think you should check out More Men Must Die. It's only three US dollars on Steam right now, so go on and grab it before the devs come to their senses and start charging more, because it's easily worth it. Yeah, thanks Australia Post. That's how this is supposed to look, alright? I should have, but I didn't. Alright, you just get to have audio.